Good morning. Didn't see you there. Caught me doing some light reading. Welcome to another fantasy intervention quick shot. Today, we're going to discuss one of my favorite NFL running backs, Jonathan Taylor, and whether or not he belongs at the top of your dynasty running back rankings. By the end of this video, I'll reveal where I've got him. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, who wants a shot? Yeah. Quick shot. Jonathan Taylor's season was a bit of a mixed bag. Taylor spent his first nine games stuck in a running back by committee with Naheem Hines and Jordan Wilkins, seeing only a 43.7% snap share. During those nine games, Taylor averaged 3.7 yards per carry and 47.6 rushing yards. There was legitimate concern Taylor might be the next Trent Richardson. There was a light at the end of the tunnel in that nine-game stretch, however. In games Taylor saw over a 50% snap share, he averaged a 60% snap share, 16.6 carries, 3 targets, 2.6 receptions, 16 routes, 99.6 total yards, and 16.6 fantasy points per game in full PPR setting. Now, compare that to the other six games, Taylor averaged 35.4% snap share, 10.5 carries, 3.2 yards per carry, 9.5 routes, 2.5 targets, 55.3 total yards, and 9.53 fantasy points in full PPR setting. Taylor was showing that he could be productive when given the opportunities. As we all know, opportunity is king when it comes to running backs. It took until week 11 but something hit Frank Wright, and he started feeding Taylor. In a contest against the Green Bay Packers, Taylor was fed 22 carries, his highest total since week two when he saw 26. He also saw four targets and produced 114 total yards on four yards per carry. He only saw a 52% snap share, but he made the most of it. Over the next five weeks, Taylor's snap share spiked to an average of 63.6%. And again, we see improved production and efficiency correlated to his usage. In the five weeks, Taylor saw averages of 19.4 carries, 5 yards per carry, 15.4 yards, 2.6 targets, 2 receptions, 144.6 total yards, and 26.1 fantasy points per game. Taylor was the RB1 during that stretch. But context matters. First and foremost, that does include a Week 17 uh, contest against the Jacksonville Jaguars, where Taylor popped off for 254 yards and two touchdowns. More importantly, though, we need to focus on all the matchups. Taylor faced the Green Bay Packers, the Houston Texans twice, the Las Vegas Raiders, the Pittsburgh Steelers, and, as we mentioned, the Jacksonville Jaguars. Four of those teams ranked in the bottom six in allowing fantasy points to running backs. Um, the Steelers were the only formidable rush defense they faced. But even they were without rudge, edge rushing spe specialist Bud Dupree. So where does Taylor belong in your dynasty rankings? That's up to you to decide. I had him fifth before the regular season began. And as it stands, he's moved absolutely nowhere for me. He is still fifth, locked in behind Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley, Alvin Kamara, and Dalvin Cook. Taylor has one huge advantage over those names and that he's the youngest, but until he produces consistently at a high level, I'm just not ready to move him above those names. I also won't be able to breathe a sigh of relief until I see Taylor be given the reins entirely. Yes, it seems to be trending that way, but the running back by committee system runs rampant in the NFL, much to the demise of us. I'd also like to see him produce against better defenses and do it the same way he did uh, against the poorest ones. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed my very first fantasy intervention quick shot. Once again, my name is Evan. Make sure to describe, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Twitter at joinourcircle underscore and myself at Dr. Dynasty. That's Dynasty with an E instead of a Y at the end.